from the left navigation, let's select more and scroll down and select automation. In automation, you will see three options, workflows, queues, and promotions. Workflows allows you to manage the various workflow processes, such as how you send follow-up communication with a first-time giver or first-time guest. Queues lets you see everyone who has gone through an automated workflow. And finally, promotion plans allows you to create a situation where someone moves from one group to a next. This is used a lot in kids ministry if you want to move kids from like preschool to elementary or from class to class as you see in the example here. Let's first go into workflows. So before I get started, let me just give you an example of a workflow that I have created to let you see some of the options and then we will build a workflow together. Let's go into assimilation and here I have a couple of different processes in this assimilation workflow. One for first time guests, one for returning guests. Let's just go to first time guests. And here you see on the left, these various tasks that I wish to be performed. To add a new task, I just select the add new button. And these are the list of workflow processes or tasks that I can add to a workflow process. Let's cancel out of this and I'll show you a couple that I've done. The first task in this workflow process that I've created is to send an email. So if I select this button, it lets you see the way that I have the email configured. If I select option number two, it lets you see how I want to modify information on a person's profile field. If I select number three, this is where my workflow adds someone specifically to a group. And then number four, I've created a workflow in which the automation will contact a group of volunteers and I've provided a group of volunteers with information on how I want these volunteers to interact with someone within this workflow process. Now for people to be added into this workflow process, that can be triggered from a report that I have running or it can be triggered from a form. So let's go back to the beginning and start a workflow process together. If I select workflows, I'll select add new and then I name my workflow. You can give it a description if you choose, then select create. Now I need to go ahead and add a process within this workflow. As you saw within my example, you can have multiple processes within a workflow. Let's select add a process. And now it'll ask me to name the process and use a name similar to whatever the process it is that you are sending someone through. Maybe it's just letting someone know happy birthday on their birthday, or maybe it's something like how you wanna follow up with a first time guest for this, we'll just select test, and then you have the option to give a description. The third option here, reentry buffer, allows for people within the system to re-enter this process, but this option sets a time limit in which someone can enter this process. So let's say someone can enter this process multiple times, but they can't enter this process before a three month lag. You can set this re-entry buffer to indicate that. So someone can enter this process every three months. Next, you see the option trigger. And this allows you to set a condition which when true, automatically adds a person to this workflow process. And here you see a list of examples to choose from. If we select none, then this means that a person needs to be added to the workflow process manually or if they come from a form submission or an SMS submission. If we select daily, this means that the system will daily check for whatever that condition is and then add someone to the workflow process. So let's say for instance that we are running a search and if someone meets the criteria within the search, we add them through the workflow. Selecting daily means that it will run that search every day and we can say at what time of day we want to run that search. We also have the option to check if an action is performed on someone's profile and automatically add them to a workflow process. And then we have a custom to let you define specifically how you want the workflow process to look for anyone that may need to be added. So for this option, let's just select daily. The system's going to check every day to see if the criteria is met. And you see I'm starting today. I didn't set an end date. You can do that if you want to set an end date. And then what time do you want this trigger to be executed? And I'm gonna say instead of 9 p.m., I'm gonna say 9 a.m. 
And so every day at 9 a.m., the system will run this check. And so what check do I want the system to run? And here it says query. Now I can select from this right dropdown and choose any saved queries or reports that I have within the system. If I don't have a saved query, I can select this add new and it will take me to the query builder. And at this point, I build the query that I want the system to run every day. And then if someone meets the criteria of that query, they will be added to the workflow process. For sake of example, we're going to run a report to check and see if anyone has missed a small group meeting or a service within the past week. So let's select attendance and then let's select date and we'll select does not have attendance logs. And then from this option, we'll choose last week. Now, just to see the results of this query, I'll roll down and view results. And this gives me a list of everyone who does not have attendance records from this last week. And I can save this as a query. And so then when I am in my workflow, I'm looking through the list of queries that I have saved and then selecting from those saved queries to add to my workflow process. After you name it, select save now we can go back to our workflow process so let's go to automation workflows and you can see from this list here i have new test workflow now it's grayed out because it's not active let's select new test workflow there's no processes currently added to the system so let's add that process we'll do the three month re-entry buffer select months and then choose daily because i want this performed daily and i'm going to change this to 9 a.m and then it asks what search criteria. This is the one we just built, so let's look for that. No attendance last week. We'll select that option. It shows us the filter that we have set, and then we select create. So after we build this, that adds a trigger to the workflow, and now we need to decide the various tasks that we want performed whenever someone enters this workflow. So let's select add task. The first option we have is to send an email. Let's select that option. And then here you see various information. The name is just what is the name of this task? And it automatically puts send email. Since I am sending an email, I will keep that, but we can modify that if we need to. Send welcome email. And then we can provide a description if we choose to provide a description, which shows up here on the left. We can decide who the email comes from. You can see if it's left empty, it'll come from your organization's main contact. Now that we can leave this section blank because it's already selected here with this checkbox that we're gonna email the person currently within this queue or within this task. Now we can also choose to BCC someone and then we just put in the subject and the message within the system. And then we can begin to type the email that we want to send individuals. We can also add graphically rich emails, just selecting this icon here, insert email template, and then choosing from the email templates that we've already built. I'll insert this template. And then I can choose whether or not I want to send an SMS message as a fallback in case the email bounces. Since this email is built, I'll select save. And now I'll add another task to this workflow process. Now you see the list of options here. Let's just go through these options. We've already seen how to send an email. The second option here is to wait. And so you can wait a certain amount of time before moving someone to the next task. Now the system will automatically move from one task to the next automatically unless you set a wait time. So if I wanna send an email and then wait two days and then send another email, I can choose to do that. But if I just have send email one and email two and I don't put a wait, it'll send both emails almost at the same exact time. I can also choose to add someone to a group. So let's select that as an option. And then if I select add to group, the first option again is to name this task. It automatically puts add to group. I will keep that. And then it asks for a description. I'll keep the description already provided by the system. The third thing is to search for the group that I would like to add someone to. So here I'll select that membership 101 class and I'll add someone to this group. And then it asks me, do I want to add them to the group as a member or I can choose from this drop down to select the leader. Now, when someone comes into this workflow process, they will automatically receive an email and they will automatically be added to this group. Let's select add task. You see some other options we have here, add the process. So I can, 
from this workflow process, add someone to another workflow process that I have created. The fifth option and the last one on this left column is update a person's profile. So I can update profile field information if someone is in this workflow process. The sixth is to send a text. And the seventh is to assign a person. And now this workflow task requires a manual completion by the person that you assign. So let's select this option. And now let's select assignment. Once again, the name and description I can add. And then I can add a pool of people that I want to receive this assignment. So I can type in an individual's name and it gives me a list of people currently within the system. I'll add Tim and then I'll also add Cheryl as well. Now the system will send a message to Tim or to Cheryl to complete this task and it will use a round robin strategy, meaning when the first person comes into the workflow process, they'll be signed to Tim, second person signed to Cheryl, third person assigned back to Tim, fourth person to Cheryl, so on and so forth. I can choose whether or not I want to allow these people to reassign this task to someone else or leave it as no. Now, if someone entered the workflow process via a form, I can choose whether or not to let Tim or Cheryl see how that person completed the form. I'll select yes, and then I provide the instructions that I want Tim and Cheryl to have when connecting with this person in the workflow process. For this, I'll just say, call this person. But you can make it as detailed as you'd like. And then you set the due date or the deadline in which Tim and Cheryl need to complete this task. I'm gonna say seven days later. And this allows me to send an email one day before the due date reminding these two volunteers that they need to complete their task if they've not completed it. See, the, the last option here allows the assignee to send someone to another process after completion. I'll select no and then just save this. And if we hit this add task button, I just wanna show you the last three options. Drop from group drops an individual from a group. The skip to done skips other tasks and just allows someone to complete the workflow process without other tasks having occurred. And then this could be based upon any criteria that you set. Maybe you have that person who was assigned to call them, ask a series of questions based upon how they answer. They could just skip the person to done. And then you can also branch. So you could send people two different directions based upon a particular criteria. So let's cancel off of this. Here we have our workflow process that is complete. Let's just make sure we save this. And now we have to set this workflow process as active. So now let's go back into workflows. Once again, let's select this new test workflow. And then we'll select the actions button in the top right and edit the workflow details. At this point, we need to enable the workflow. Because up until this point, the workflow process has been created, but it's not been executed until we enable the workflow process. So we select enabled and then save, and this workflow process has been added to the system. For now, we'll just cancel. Now let's look at the queues button. And here you see a list of everyone that has gone through workflow queues and their status. Now you have some options. I can filter this, maybe based upon due date, or based upon the individual's name, record type, you have various options. You can even filter this by the workflow that they went through. And it looks for the various workflows. For sake of example, I'll just select assimilation, select search, and it gives me a list of everyone who has gone through or at least been added to the workflow process assimilation. You see some of these people are past due. We can also see someone's status on the workflow itself. So if we go back into workflow and we select assimilation and select first time guest, you can see with this tab along the top queue to see everyone who's gone through the workflow process and any individuals who are stuck in the workflow process in some capacity and where they are stuck. And you see here, it's because I've assigned certain individuals to follow up and they have neglected to do so. And so these people are stuck in this workflow process at this task. Now let's take a look at promotion plans. If we select this option, this allows us to move people from one group to another. If I select Promotion Kids Ministry, this will show you the various promotions that I have set. I have first grade moving to second grade, second grade moving to kids ministry. And I can add a step to this process. Once again, it takes someone from one group and adds them to another. So if I select Add Step, I decide what group that I want them to come from. Let's say membership. 
and then which group do I want to add them to? So for this membership 101, I'll add them to this adult all age group. And then it asks questions who should be promoted. Promote all members or promote specific members. If I select this option, I can choose people specifically that are already in this membership 101 who I want to move to this adult all ages. Or I can promote all members except for someone else. Now this is a helpful option if you have, let's say, teachers in a group and you want all the students to be promoted but the teachers to stay within the group, you can choose that option here. After you save this, so let's select Michelle, move them over to the selected side and then save. And then now you have the promotion plan built within the system. To execute the promotion plan, you just need to select the execute plan button when you're ready to perform that promotion. So one last thing as we talk about automation. Uh, we set a trigger to where someone can enter the automated workflow through a query, but you can also set automated workflows directly from forms that are being created. So let's select form. And let's go into a form that we've already built here, Guest Connection. And if I want to add a workflow process to anyone who completes this form specifically, I go to Settings and then select this Automation button. And here you see that the Automation First Time Guest has already been selected. But likely you'll choose this and there will not have been an Automation selected. And to add them to an Automation, we just select from this drop down workflow process and then it gives us a list of our workflow processes here if we select this drop down here are the list of workflow processes that we have and we can also choose which task specifically within that workflow process we want to add them to as at least the starting point of adding them to the workflow process. Another thing we can do is add someone to different workflow processes based upon how they fill out the form. And so when that's the case, let's go to this example here where someone can select from various options. If we hit this pencil button, we see these various options of which people can choose when completing the form. And to add an automation specifically to each answer, we just select the Add Automation button, select from the choice option that the person filling out the form has. The first one, if they select joining a small group, I'd like to add them to a workflow process and then choose Connect to a group. If they answer a different question, let's say they're interested in volunteering, I can add them to the workflow process and it lets me choose another workflow process that I've built. And then I select save or select done and it saves the progress. For now, we'll close out. If you have any questions as it relates to automation, feel free to visit our help center and also feel free to reach out to our support staff by selecting this icon in the lower right and asking any questions that you have. Thank you.